Right, so this session is just um, going to whip through a few slides really about the, um, the data service and about the crime data that we have available from the data service. Um, so the first few slides are just about the data service in general. So who are we? Well, we are a resource that's funded by the Economic and Social Research Council. And um, we provide a single point of access to a wide variety of secondary social science data. So these are social science data that people can take from the website and use. And we also provide a wide range of support. We have training events like this one. We also have online materials and we have a help desk and offer other guidance. And I'll be talking more about that later. So um, basically, who can use it? Well, basically anyone. Anyone can register with the UK Data Service. We are very commonly used by academic researchers and students and also by government analysts, by charities and foundations, etc. But you don't have to be um, using the UK Data Service for work. And indeed, anybody can register and most people can get access to most of the data. Okay, so we are basically a large library or repository of data. So we don't provide the data ourselves in the sense we haven't um, gathered the data. We just provide access to it. So the data, in fact, come from a wide range of sources, such as the um, official agencies like central government. Um, a lot of the data is also from international governmental organisations or research institutions and individual academics from research grants. So if you were to collect some data as part of your research, and um, particularly if it's funded by the ESRC, you might want to make it available for reuse and you can deposit your data via us. Okay, so, so yes, and when you want to get data, you go to our website, and this is the front page of the website. And you can use the big search bar at the center there to search for data that interests you, or you can use the menu called Get Data, and that's another way of browsing for data. So you can search for key data, look at list of the key data that we've got. And you can also look at the, the main themes um, of data that we have, about which I'll be talking in a bit. OK, so what kinds of data do we hold? Well, we have um, UK surveys and cross-national surveys, and these are large-scale government-funded surveys. We've got longitudinal data, which are similar to the, um, the other surveys, except that these are ones that follow individuals over time. The international data are things like data from the United Nations, for example, the OECD, and they um, are multinational aggregate data banks that you can download from the, the website. Uh, we have census data, which uh, the census data in the UK, which is collected every 10 years. And we have got the data from 1961 up to 2011 that are available. And this comes as um, samples of the data as micro data. So that could be used as uh, in the same way that survey data can be used. Or we have aggregate census data, so grouped data. Um, we also have flow data and the boundary data for the census as well. So you can combine, say, the aggregate and the boundary data in order to create maps of the census data. Um, we've also got business data, which is um, micro data about businesses and some administrative data. And we also have a range of qualitative um, data sets. So these are kind of multimedia things. So they could be um, just text from interviews um, or, or other things. And we also have mixed methods data. OK, then. So um, what else can you get from the UK Data Service? Well, we have a range of webinars, um, online workshops, conferences, etc. And if you look on our website, you can see on the events pages everything that we've got there. Um, we do a lot of guides, video tutorials, um, interactive data skills modules, um, which can be useful for your own kind of personal learning. If you just want to look at something, you want to look something up, we've got a guide to um, SPSS and a guide to Stata as well. We also run an email help desk. So if you want to, um, if you are trying to find some data and you're struggling to find something, or if you've got hold of data, but you're not quite sure about it, you've looked at the documentation, but you're thinking, I'm not quite sure I understand this, or you think there might be something wrong with it, um, or anything along those lines, we're happy to help. And you just need to contact us via our help desk. 
the only thing the help desk doesn't do is to actually do the analyses of the data for you. So we can't answer questions about analysis. And we also, from our website, have a range of case studies about how other people have used the data. OK, and just a final point. If you use any of our data, then you must um, provide citation to the data and you'll find all the citation information alongside the in the catalog pages for all the data. OK, then. So what do we have in terms of crime data? Well, as I mentioned before, if you go to our website and you go to crime uh, to get data, you can see um, data by theme. So we have a range of different themes. Um, you can see a few here on the screen, ageing, crime, economics, etc. Um, the one that you're most likely to be interested in is the crime um, data. And what we have here is a list of key data sets. Um, so there are normally about four or five key data sets um, for each theme, and they are for each of the different kinds of data. So they're likely to be about five recommendations for surveys, five recommendations for longitudinal data etc. So that's a really good place to start if you've not used crime data before and you're just wondering what's available. Um, we also have examples on how to find the data and we have case studies and teaching um, case studies as well in those pages. Okay then, so what's actually in our, our crime data collection? So the data tend to be collected by research centres and, and large government organisations. And in terms of survey data, it's anonymised survey data, and it's generally at the individual level. And these data are indeed very heavily used by um, a wide range of users, including academics, government organisations, etc. And some of them are used to obtain the official statistics used by the government. So the Crime Survey for England and Wales and the Scottish Crime and Justice Survey are examples of those. So the Crime Survey for England and Wales um, was run for many years as the British Crime Survey, despite covering um, only England and Wales in many of the years. And this um, has been run since 1982 and it became an annual survey ever since 2001 to 2002. And the kinds of topics it covers are basically experiences of crime and it's used to estimate the levels of crime um, in the UK, uh, sorry, in England and Wales. Um, there's also the Scottish Crime and Justice Survey. And um, this has very similar topics. So you can see the, um, the topics that are covered in this. So, things about experiences of being a victim of crime, which could include violent crime or property crime, all sorts of different things. Um, the public perception of crime, the police and the justice system. Um, and they also have a self-completion questionnaire. And this is true also of the Crime Survey for England and Wales, which covers the kind of sensitive topics that people might not want to talk about um, if, if they were actually directly in front of an interviewer. So things like drug abuse, partner abuse, sexual victimization and stalking. Um, obviously it doesn't cover everything. Um, so crimes without a specific victim or against businesses um, or crimes without a victim to interview obviously are not covered by these sorts of survey data. Okay, so here's a list of some of the key survey data on crime that are available from the data service. So I've mentioned the first two there's also a commercial victimization survey um, and amongst um, data sets that have, have not been run recently, there's an arrestee survey and conflict and violence in prison survey, but unfortunately they're not, um, not recent. The um, longitudinal um, data includes the Edinburgh, Edinburgh uh, sorry, study of youth transitions and crime, et cetera. Okay then, so how do you get hold of these data? Well, um, there are four levels of access. Um, most census and international data are available um, by open access and we have a small number of survey teaching data sets that you can get. So these are data sets that you can just go to the website and you can just download and you don't need to be registered with the data service to get them. Um, the next level, the end user license data sets, um, this covers the vast majority of what we have on our website essentially. So the vast majority of survey data sets will be available under um, the end user license. And um, you agreeing in effect with the end user license not to share the data with anyone else or to try to 
identify any individuals, which would in fact be very hard anyway with these kinds of data. And in order to do that, you would need to get access to that. You would need to uh, register with the data service. And you would, if you're based at a UK higher education institute, you would use your username and password um, to log in via the UK data service. If you don't have one of those, then that's, that's fine. We'll be able to send you um, login details um, that you can use. Okay, there are two other kinds of um, uh, access that's worth knowing about. So special license data, um, these are data that is slightly, have slightly more detail in them um, and they are slightly more potentially disclosive therefore, which is why it's slightly harder to get hold of. And what you'd need to do is to apply for access to, to those data. And there may be a bit of a delay on getting that a matter of a month or so or two. And um, when you've been given permission to get the data, you'll be given a passphrase and then you just download that from the UK Data Service website using the passphrase to access it. Secure access data is also known as controlled data. And these data are even more potentially disclosive. And uh, again, there's a, a procedure to get hold of these data and you'd access them via um, Secure Lab, which is an online um, environment. Okay then, so a couple of key things. Um, documentation um, is available for all of the, uh, the surveys. So here's the documentation for the Commercial Victimization Survey 2017. You'll see that the documentation does vary depending on the particular data set, but you'll, you'll see in general this kind of thing, something like questionnaire, technical report, and all of that is available to look at without any kind of registration. Okay, so you have a few options in terms of analysing these data. Um, if the data is in our online um, tool called Nestar, then you'll be able to analyse it using that. And it should be obvious because it'll say um, one option for accessing it will be to explore it online. And this is just a screenshot from Nestar. And essentially what it is, is it allows you to look at um, the variables, so you can see the coding for the variables, and it often has information about what the exact question was, for example. So you can explore the data without having to download it and, and use the statistics package. Um, so it's particularly good for teaching purposes, really. Um, and uh, you can also do simple analyses, such as um, produce frequency tables, you can wait, and you can do cross tabs and basic um, regressions and things like that with it. So the um, other way of approaching it, which is the one that most people would use um, for, for using um, more full analyses would be to directly um, use it on the computer. So you download the data, um, assuming it's one that you can download and you would analyze it using a statistics package like SPSS data or SAS, or in this instance, R or R Studio. Okay, um, I think that was everything I wanted to say. So does anyone have any questions about the data service or what we've got available?